Yo, so I recently decided to grind it out for the season and secure my season 14 grand champion rewards. And now I want to pay it forward as much as I can and help you guys get here as well. I have a unique approach planned for doing this. Instead of creating another video talking about how to flip reset or how to move super fast in free play, I wanted to provide you guys with something you can translate into your gameplay immediately. You see, while I was on my final push to getting those grand champ rewards, I realized that I was playing terribly. I had to do all that I could to create a win, and I can tell you right now that I didn't have to pull off any crazy breezy flicks or double flip resets to outplay my opponents. In fact, it was the small, subtle things that allowed me to rank up. And these things are done by every grand champion, probably subconsciously. What we're going to do is take five scenarios in-game that you see frequently and pair it side by side with diamond gameplay to illuminate the differences between the two. Before we jump into it, if you are new here, I make Rocket League videos once a week, and if you want to stay up to date with those, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on them. All right, let's get rolling. The first thing that Grand Champions do better than lower ranks is their boost pathing. Without paying too much attention, this looks like normal movement and gameplay. This player is doing this without even looking at the boost pads or even thinking about it. He has to wait for the play to develop, but watch as he doesn't use any boost drifting up the field, putting himself in prime position. He is ready to strike. Looking overhead, we see his movement very clearly and how smooth it is. Now, let's take a look at the diamond player's movement. The scenario is very similar. The ball is moving downfield and he has to wait for the play to develop, but you can see that he misses a few small pads on the way there. This could be the difference maker on if the ball is scored or not. To practice this, and I know I said this isn't going to be a free play guide, but we're going to have to for this one. Go into free play, turn off unlimited boost, and hit the ball back and forth while collecting small pads. Only collect the big pads when it makes sense to. An extra tip is using the grid lines on each of the maps. These aren't just for design, they literally guide you to the boost pads. With ball cam on, these grid lines help immensely on collecting those sweet dimes. I've been doing a lot of research in lower ranks lately and I noticed a very common trend. You boys are thirsty AF. Like if the ball is anywhere near you, you want some of that action. In all seriousness, I think as we get better, especially in Diamond, players feel more confident in their skill and want to prove it to some extent by confirming they could get a touch or control the ball from an awkward position. Not hitting the ball comes with some trust in your teammates. What you should be doing is, number one, trusting your teammate has the hit, and number two, trust your teammate will make a mistake. If you do this, you'll do what this player does in the clip and hurry to the goal because your boy in the corner hasn't watched my video about corners. So with that in mind, looking at this diamond clip will pretty much confirm this mentality where the player really struggles with spacing himself in the ball and he wants to handle the situation by himself. This ends in a giant cluster in the corner and an overall shaky scenario where one ball clear to the center would have resulted in a goal. So to work on this, start to implement the mentality of trust your teammate has the hit and trust your teammate will make a mistake and position yourself accordingly. The third tip is all about moving a little faster and using some of that precious boost you love so much. While in the air, you really can't react and change your direction, so Grand Champs know that minimizing air time is essential. You'll see this everywhere in Grand Champ, and in a game of inches, or pixels, it's so important that you start to boost towards the ground when the airspace you're in is no longer serving you. Looking at our diamond equivalent, our player has more than enough boost to start moving towards the ground after this miss, and he could have been in a completely different part of the map by now. Although it didn't matter in this clip, practicing this while you play is going to be super beneficial in the long run. Practicing this isn't too difficult. I actually didn't do this enough and I could say that this tip might be my favorite and the one I would suggest doing immediately. Maybe this should just be a free play tutorial because we're going to go back into free play and we're going to work on some dribbles and I want you guys to start seeing what it feels like to boost towards the ground. So do some dribbles, add some jumps and start moving towards the ground, add in a couple wave dashes and you'll be looking like squishy muffins in no time. All right, tip number four is all about maintaining possession of the ball. At Grand Champ, it's imperative that you don't give away the ball for free. You'll see the player in this clip jump once and refrain from using his second flip as to not pass the ball to the other team. After his first touch, he does everything he can to get to the ball as quickly as possible. This is a high level play as it maintains control and at worst, a 50-50. On the other end, diamond players have an opening to boom the ball and they sometimes just send it across the half line only to have it defended and return to their side. This occurred more times than you might think and is completely avoidable. If you're not comfortable doing this, start working on controlling the ball with jumping. The underside of your car is your friend here. Use the underside of your car to land a soft touch, air roll and boost to the ground, and make your next move quick. Doing this in diamond will definitely break some ankles. Add this to your gameplay when the situation calls for it and step up your rank. 
The final tip is about making decisions, particularly when it comes to infield passes. There is nothing worse than extending away from your side, having a pass sent your way, then having the other team intercept it and rendering you useless for the next play. In Diamond, I saw this happening way too often where players seemed to wait too long to play the pass. Maybe they were thinking the other team didn't see what they saw. The Grand Champion equivalent is done with a lot more speed and efficiency. There's no hesitation on this, and even if you miss the shot, it's okay because a mediocre hit means you're still on offense. So the takeaway from this is that if you're pushing up parallel or slightly ahead of your teammate and a pass comes your way, make sure to make a quick move on this hit. One, two, three, four, five. If you like the video, please subscribe. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, yep, those are your tips. If you liked it, just leave a like, leave a comment. And if this video gets 200 likes, I will never sing again. All right, see you next week. Later.